Welcome to the online broadcast of Light of Life Ministry. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm Bishop Alfred L. Troy. And I'm Dr. Cheryl Troy. And we're so glad to have you with us today, amen, as we prepare to go into the word of God. I pray that you all have been safe, amen, and you're taking good care of yourself. Amen. Dr. Troy, would you lead us in prayer, please? Amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you and I give you praise for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we're rejoicing and we're glad in it. Father, I lift everyone that under the sound of my voice up unto you today, and I ask you, Father God, to meet every need that they have, yes, for Lord. you know what each one of us stand in need of. Yes, Father God, I thank you, hallelujah, for your word that says that, that you would never leave us nor forsake us, Father God. Amen. And amen. I thank you, Lord, because your word says also that you cannot lie, and I praise God for that. I lift our sick and shut up unto you today, Father God, and I ask you to touch them right now. Yes, Jesus. From head to toe, make them whole through and through. Father, I ask you to restore health to them yes. this day. Father God, I just thank you for all things, and I just thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Please allow the worship ministry to bless us in song at this time.
you are, yes you are, yes you are And you are that wonderful selection. Amen. They always Amen. do a great job. Amen. And we thank God for that. Amen. All right. Let us prepare our hearts to go into the word of God. Amen. So if you get your Bible, I hope it's right there before you. Uh, <laughs> turn in your Bible, please, to Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the 22nd verse. Proverbs 18th chapter, the 22nd verse. Now we're going to cover many more passages of scripture. So, uh, we're going to let your fingers do the walking through the pages of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 22. Amen. Would you read that for me, please? Amen. He who finds a wife finds mm. a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. He who finds a wife finds a good thing, good thing. and obtains favor from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I like to use for a thought today, uh, simply that that part of that passage of scripture. He who finds a wife. Mm. Amen. Now, make sure you know who's supposed to do the finding. I know we live in a, a modern age where things are done a little bit differently. <laughs> but when I read the word, it says he who finds, not she who finds. Amen, baby. Amen. 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 Well, I, you know what? I thank God I found a good thing. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. This past Tuesday was my wife and I's 48th wedding anniversary. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. She's running from year to year. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Glory. Uh, and by this year being the way it is, you know, we had to celebrate it a little bit differently. We really couldn't, couldn't take it somewhere like I wanted to and all of that. So we had a stay at home. <laughs> celebration. Quarantine. Together, yeah, we're quarantining. And I, so, I thank God that we love each other. Amen. <laughs> it would have been rough trying to quarantine with somebody that you don't love. Bless the Lord. But I, I thank God for her. Amen. Being by my side for 48 years. Glory to God. What a blessing Jesus. she has been to me. And I pray that I've been a blessing to her as well. Amen. Amen. But he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Amen. And whenever a person uh, engage in a relationship with another person, you know, if they're serious about it, because it's serious business, 
it could possibly lead to marriage. Amen. Mm. It could lead to marriage. I heard Pastor Hagee say in one of his messages one day, marriage is like a phone call in the wee hours of the night. First you get the ring and then you wake up. And that's what a lot of marriages are like. First you get the ring and then, then after a while you wake up. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of you have, have waken up and said, now, Lord, what have I got myself into? <laughs> Not knowing that marriage is a, a commitment designed by God. <laughs> Amen. 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 To those of you who are, are married, praise God. We praise God for your marriage and your relationship. Praise God. We praise God that you uh, continue to love each other each and every day. Amen. And for those of you who are not married and may want to be married, Pay attention to what we're saying. Man. Don't go to sleep now because you might miss something that's important. And for some of you who are not married and don't plan to be married right away, well, it might be good that you stay the way you are. <laughs> Praise God. Because marriage is a commitment, a total commitment between yes, two parties is. and God. Um, in these 48 years of marriage, these 48 years of marriage, the thing that blessed me the most is when I came into the realization that marriage takes three. What do you think about that? Amen. Marriage takes three. You see, God has to be in the marriage, and each individual has to be committed to the marriage. That's so true. marriage takes three, and the most That's important true. person in the relationship is God. God. Not the husband, not the wife, but God. God. And um, because to have uh, we reached a point in our marriage where we let God come in, you know, we didn't do that initially. Amen. But we reached a point in the marriage where we allow God to come in because if he hadn't came in, I don't think it would have been a marriage. But Amen. glory to God, God Amen. knows better than we do. Amen. Amen. But when God stepped in, it, it, it transformed our relationship. It Amen. transformed our marriage. It transformed how we see each other. We were able to see each other in different eyes. Amen. Amen. With the eyes that God will allow us to see each other with. And that made all the difference Amen. in our relationship. I often tip. say to uh, marriage couples that marriage is the hardest work you're ever doing in your life. The hardest work. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because it's a incomplete work. You're always working on your relationship. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, dear? Always. 40 years, 48 years later, still working. <laughs> still, still working. working still learning Amen. I mean still learning um, things about each other it's, it's, it's funny it's a strange thing Amen. but I love it amen <laughs> and I bless God for that amen it's a, it's a working relationship amen. amen and I thank God for it amen one of the things about marriage that, that sometimes is humorous to me marriage is OJT you learn as you go Amen. And then in God, I say, you learn as you grow. Amen. As you grow in your relationship, <laughs> you are learning each other. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, um, let's look at some of the foundational principles of marriage that's found in the Word of God. Found in Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 21 through 25. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 through 25. Would you read that for me, please? Amen. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Amen, amen. <laughs> they say, Adam said, whoa, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had a good look at something he had never had before or never seen before. And he was excited about the relationship he was about to engage with. With his wife. Bless yeah. the Lord. You know, God began his dominion in the earth uh, through two people. Through a man and through a woman. 
But they were more than just a man and a woman. Mm. They were husband and wife. Amen. And a lot of times we don't, we kind of miss that part of the relationship. Not only were they the first created beings on the earth, but after God created them on the earth, God brought them together and they became the first couple on the face of the earth. They That's were right. man and wife. Oh, man. Glory yes. to God. Amen. Yes. See, God entered them into holy matrimony. Glory to God. Amen. Holy matrimony. Something that was sanctified and ordained by God. Amen. She's his wife, not his old lady. Glory <laughs> to God in the highest. Amen. Give us some respect. Amen. That's my wife. Ooh. Amen. Yes. And I can recall the kids growing up. You know, I had to emphasize that over and over. Women, now you're not going to disrespect my wife. And that's the same thing with anybody else. You know, I, I'm a fair-minded person, but when it comes to my wife and my kids, then I, 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 I tend to lose it. I may have to go back to the altar if you mess with my wife and my kids. Bless be God. But the Word of God lets us know that God brought them together as husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, the Word of God tells us in Genesis 2 and 18, something else along that line as God began to progress the situation on forward and let us know uh, and show us some of the things that he had in plan for this man and this woman. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. See, one thing about marriage, you can make your plans all you want to, but you need to make room for God's plan because mm -hmm. God's plan be different from your plan. <laughs> Amen. All the time. Amen. Would you read for me Genesis 2 and 18? And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. God made him a helper. One that was comparable for him. One that was one that was comparable for him. One that was just like him in so many uh, ways. Amen. Uh, God said that uh, Adam was alone. He didn't say that Adam was lonely. <laughs> uh, one of the things as a pastor I hear a lot of time from uh, individuals who are uh, 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 single and may not be married just yet that they lonely. And you you lonely? Lonely is different from what God created. Amen. He said that Adam was alone. Amen. He didn't say that Adam was lonely. And there's a difference mm. between being alone and being lonely. Being alone means that you uh, have no one else around you. Mm -hmm. No one else present with you. And when you are alone, you're always aware of the people around you. Mm, okay. Situations around you, you're, you're always aware of those. But when you're lonely, you're <laughs> sad because you have not a friend. You're sad because you don't have any company. And when you're lonely, that's when you're very vulnerable. Amen. Vulnerable to, to um, attractions, you know. All a person of the opposite sex would have to do to you is wink his eye at you. And you think, that, oh, Lord, that means something. Well, he might have got something in his eye, you know. <laughs> it might not mean a thing. <laughs> Glory to God. But when you're lonely, you 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 are looking for someone, looking for something, Amen. And you're vulnerable when you're claiming that you're lonely. Well, when God created Adam by Himself, He said that He wasn't lonely; He was alone. Mm. Amen. One thing about the relationship that when God created Adam and, and Adam was alone. The Bible says that before God gave Adam a wife, Ugh. God gave Adam a job. Amen. 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 God made sure that Adam was gainfully employed before he gave him a wife. Now, it's amazed me in this day and age, you know, and it, uh, so many individuals' uh, wives are taking care of husbands. I don't understand that. I just don't understand mm -hmm. that. Y'all, you can say I'm old school or whatever kind of school. I just don't understand it because if God gave Adam a a, a job before He gave him a wife, I think if you're a husband, uh, the head of the household, you should have a job. 
Amen. Now, now, look, ladies, that don't mean that you had a job for two weeks when you met him and y'all get married. Amen. Boy, this is tight, but it's right. Glory to God. It doesn't mean that, you know, he been on the job for six months. You, you need to find out about that situation. Amen. <laughs> Check into it. <laughs> it's strange when I as I, I think about marriage relationship. Um, if you if you get a driver's license, you have to take a test and pass the test. But if you get marriage license, all you got to do is give it another person and go down and say, "We want to get married." And it, oh my God, you better better give him a test. You better find out who he is, where he's going, and where he's trying to take you. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. It's a, a it's a path card. that you should be going together. You say he don't even have a library card. My, my, my. No, does he have a library card? Does he have a library card? Mm, mm, mm. Well, he need more than a library card. He need a job. Amen. Amen. I understand situations change sometimes. Um, people be uh, out of work. You know, that, that happened to me in the past. And I was out of work, but... Glory to God, I had a, a good, strong woman with me, amen, and she was able to, to go through the go-throughs as I went through it until I found me another job, amen. And it never, it was uncomfortable, but it didn't create problems between us because that's, I was unemployed. That's right. Amen. Because I believe she knew I wasn't going to stay unemployed long. <laughs> because finding a job is, you have to get up and find a job. Now, you're doing all this on the computer, Putting in applications and all that, that's good. But, hey, make sure you're putting them in. Putting in your application. <laughs> you're trying to find a job. Sorry, Amen. Man, so, God gave Adam a job before he gave Adam a wife. Mm. Amen. So, I'm not, you, I hope you're listening. You ain't going to sleep on me, praise God. Amen. Read for me Genesis 2 and 20. So, Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Amen. Did not find a helper. The, the King James says right there, a help meet, a help that's meet for him. And hmm. when you, um, when I did some research on the word, the entomology of the word says that this particular word is talking about a divine assistant. In other words, divine the assistant. wife is supposed to be a divine, <laughs> divine assistant, assistant for the husband. Amen, amen. Now, I, I know some of you brothers might like that. Oh, yeah, you my divine assistant. But let me tell you something that the Bible tells us yes. in, in Genesis also. Tell us. The Bible tells us in Genesis that, that uh, the husband have to listen to the divine assistant sometimes. If you amen. don't believe me, and I see amen real hard on that. <laughs> um, just take uh, Abraham, for example. It came a time in his life when um, he, 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 his wife wanted him to do something, That's and true. he didn't want to do it. His wife wanted him to get rid of uh, Ishmael. And Abraham, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to do that. That's my son. I don't want to do that. But, you know, when he got along with God in prayer, God told Abraham, Abraham, do what your wife said. Yes. See, she was a divine assistant. <laughs> divine she was a divine assistant. assistant. I like Amen. that. Amen. The divine assistant to assist her husband. Amen. You know, if we look at that and understand that, that divine assistant, as she assists her husband, she can get anything she wants from him. Amen. Anything she wants. <laughs> Amen. Because she's a divine assistant. Amen. Now, again, God said, it says that in the word when you look at um, the, the word and the definition of the word, praise God. So I thank God for my like divine that. assistant. I like Glory that. to God. Now, I didn't say divine leader now. It said divine <laughs> assistant. Let's put everything in perspective. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You know, the word of God lets us know that uh, they were both made from the same stuff. Mm. See, re relationship a person get involved in, especially a, a husband and wife, they have to understand that their role is to complement each other. That's right. We complement each other. Amen. And I thank God for that. Amen. Having someone to compliment me. Amen. And, and I to compliment her. 
Glory to God. Now, that doesn't mean, and when you compliment each other, that means that you enhance each other. Yes. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Right. You improve each other. You're, you help make each other better. Glory mm. to God in the highest. Okay. Amen. Amen. You see, when you are enhancing and improving and complimenting each other, you are not competing with each other. That's true. That's you know, true. husband and wife should not be competing <laughs> with each other. Amen. Because they are complimenting each other. I often heard some people say that they complete each other. The husband complete the wife and the wife complete the husband. But I, I beg to differ with that for, for this particular reason. When God made Adam, he made Adam a whole, complete person. Mm -hmm. When God made Eve, he made Eve a whole, complete person. Amen. They didn't complete each other. They complemented each other. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. They were whole and complete when God brought them together. Amen. And I believe the same is true uh, in any matter of relationship. When, when two people get married, they, they should be whole and complete. Because if you're not, it's going to be yeah. some problem Baby. in the marriage. One thing that, that, that you can't do for your spouse is that you can't raise your spouse. Your spouse will have to be Amen. raised already. Amen. 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 You, you talking true. about it should be a grown person. Amen. <laughs> a grown person. When, you, when you're when married, <laughs> you, you know, you shouldn't be married to a man that's acting like a child. <laughs> And a man shouldn't be married to a woman that's acting like a little girl. Mm -hmm. You should be whole and complete and develop your relationship one with another. Amen. Amen. So that you can complement each other. See, the man and the woman were made out of the same stuff. The woman was made out of the same stuff that the man was made out of, but she was made differently. Mm -hmm. You know, and in the making of the woman, it tells us in verse uh, in 21 through 22 of chapter 2, it tells us how God went about this. And the thing that amazed me, he, he talks about how he did it. He did it with one real, create one woman. Read that for me, please. <laughs> and the Lord God caused a deep sleep mm -hmm. to fall on Adam. Yeah. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs mm -hmm. and closed up the flesh in its place. Mm -hmm. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Amen. One rib, one woman. No spare ribs, my mm -hmm. brothers. No, no spare, spare ribs. ribs. Amen. One rib, one woman. That was God's intent in the beginning, and that's God's intent now. One rib, one woman. No Spare real. Glory to God. Yes, the woman was made from the same thing that man was made of, the same stuff, but she was made differently. And it's important that we understand that. See, the Bible tells us in, read for me Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And the Lord God formed man. Mm. Man was formed. Yeah. Amen. And the word <laughs> form simply means, again, the definition of this word means to be squeezed, squeezed. into shape. <laughs> Amen. It was a mold. God had to put a mold and squeeze us men into shape. Amen. He wanted us to be in shape before he brought us the woman. But now man was formed by God. Mm -hmm. But read for me uh, verse 22 of the same chapter. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now, man was formed by God, mm -hmm. but woman was made yeah, by God. Made. Now, the definition of <laughs> made is different from the definition from form. The definition from form, again, is squeezed into shape. Squeezed together. together. <laughs> but the definition of made, now, the definition of made 
is he built her piece Ooh, by yeah, piece. Took a time. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> she said God took his time with woman. He built her. It's amazing, you know, uh, as 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 a young man growing up when you when you saw a, 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 a good looking girl that you was interested in, and I said this about you, the the word we said, oh man, she built. Didn't know how biblical we were in saying that. She <laughs> built. <laughs> The Commodores talk about a brick house and say she built like an Amazon. She built, <laughs> not realizing that the, the the true definition of the word that God used when God made woman is that God built her piece by mm, piece yes. by piece by piece by piece. Amen. God knew what he was doing. Amen. She wasn't squeezed together. <laughs> she was made. She was built by the hands of God. And I thank God because God knows what he's doing. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Amen. In the same word, in verse uh, 22 and 24, the, the word began to talk about marriage a little bit, take it a little bit further, progress it a little bit. Amen. And he talked about a relationship that you should have in your marriage. Read that for me, please. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. The Bible introduced a principle here that, we, that has to be in all marriages. And the individuals in the marriages have to understand that. It's the principle of leaving and cleaving. Amen. Leaving and cleaving. Notice what it says. It said that a man shall leave his father, mother, sister, brother, and all of that and cleave to his wife. Now, that same is true from, from the wife's perspective. Mm -hmm. She have to leave and cleave as well. Amen. Now, leaving and cleaving explains something. It explains the knowledge of immediate family and extended family. Mm -hmm. Amen. The immediate family is the husband, the wife, and the children. Okay. That's immediate. Anything outside of husband, wife, and children is extended. Amen. So uh, mother, father, sister, brother, cousins, aunts, uncles, all that's a part of your extended family. And... Your first priority in the relationship is to your immediate family. Go and be to God. That's right. Amen. I can recall telling my son when he got married, I said, look here, son. If I come in your house and disrespect your house, show me the door. Let me know it's time to go. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's his house. And if I'm a visitor in his house, I have to respect his house. Sorry. Likewise, in my house. <laughs> in my house. You can't come up in my house and just do like you want to. Nope. Amen. This, this is my house from my family. And, hey, it, things won't be like that. So there, mm -hmm. there has to be respect in the marriage, one for the other. That's right. And respect in the marriage for each other properties. One of the things that I have problems with, everybody else don't have a problem with, they may not, but you know, they used to give you those towels that said his and hers. Mm -hmm. And everything was his and hers, his and hers, his and hers. <laughs> well, they, never did like that. they need to be theirs because they belong to both of us. Amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> these, are, these are our towers, <laughs> these are our cups. and. <laughs> this is our bed. You know, marriage is such a strange relationship. I can recall, and, and I haven't been, I wouldn't save all my marriage, you know. But I can recall um, in the marriage, coming in late and the wife being upset with me. And she said, well, you're going to sleep on the bed. <laughs> it's a cup on the bed. Now, again, I'm, I wasn't saved. I thought, I ain't sleeping on no bed. I'm not doing that. I pay for that bed in there. I pay for it and I'm going to sleep on it. If you don't want to sleep in there with me, you sleep on the sofa. 
On the sofa, baby. That's what you was? On the sofa? Where yeah, was, where on the was? sofa. I didn't tell you in the bed. Yeah, yeah she said sleep on the, the sofa. Bed. That's what she, yeah, I wasn't sleeping in the bed. I wasn't sleep on the sofa, she yeah. said. But but guess what? <laughs> I slept in that bed, and she did too. <laughs> but we had distance in between us. We didn't make sure nothing touched. A toe didn't touch. <laughs> Boy, isn't that silly for married couples to carry on and act like that in the bed? That is nothing right, but the well, devil the getting into the relationship. But yeah, she told me to sleep. I had to sleep on the sofa. She had been watching TV too much, I think. You know, days of our life and all them stories. <laughs> but it wasn't true. But I thank God, again, I thank God for coming into our relationship because when God came in, we be, began to see things from biblical standards and, and from biblical principles. Glory to God. Yeah, she told me I was going to sleep on the sofa. And I was determined I won. Glory to God in the highest. I thank God for saving me. Amen. Because when God yes, saved me, he saved God. my relationship. Now, she's doing a lot of amen over there now. She wasn't no perfect cat either. We both had our yes, flaws. Amen. We had our flaws. And God had to straighten both of us out. Yes, he did. And let us know how it was going to be. It was going to be his way. Amen. In the relationship of leaving and cleaving, you understand your primary relationship is to your immediate family. Then you can have fellowship with your and all that with your extended family afterwards. Read verse 25 for me, please. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, mm -hmm. and were not ashamed. They were both naked and not ashamed. Now understand this principle. The Bible is saying in this principle, but they had a trusting relationship in their marriage. They had an honest relationship in their marriage relationship. They had a relationship in which they did not have anything to hide from each other. It amazed me in this day and age how people are married and they're hiding things from one another. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, I've heard over the years how individuals hide their phones. They won't let the wife touch their phone and all that. Why? My wife can go all the way through my phone. It <laughs> yes. don't matter. It don't hey, matter. Man, I have to help him with it. So. <laughs> she said she had to help me with it. Divine assistance. <laughs> yeah. My divine assistance. She, told, she don't even pick it up. Tell me, you, 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 your phone is not exciting. You just do it. <laughs> I, I leave my wallet around. No, I ain't got no, no little stuff, notes or anything. I no numbers in my wallet. It's no just right there. I ain't got nothing to hide. <laughs> if you want, there it is. <laughs> Amen. But that is the essence of the relationship that God wants us to have with each other. We have nothing to hide. Glory to God. Amen. We have nothing. To, she know how much money I got. Usually not much because she, 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 she keep me straight. I know how much she has. There's no problem. It's, it's not a, in the relationship, it's not a my, my money and your money. I need some right now. Well, she, she needs some right now. I'm going to write her a check. Okay? <laughs> um, but the relationship is, 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 is so... The oneness of the relationship is that you're one in all things. That's and I true. thank God for that. For that oneness in relationship. So you have nothing to hide from each other. When we look at the Bible, one of the things that we see so clearly is that the first attack in the earth by the devil was attack against the marriage. Amen. Amen. It was attack against the marriage. He came against what God had ordained and what God had blessed and what God had sanctified. And the devil immediately tried to get in that marriage and cause trouble. He tried to get in that marriage and cause division. Mm -hmm. Get in the marriage and cause misunderstanding. That's him. And that's exactly what he did. So when you're married and, and you allow God to bless your, bless your marriage, uh, get ready for some attacks from the adversary. That's true. Amen. I believe it's when you're married, you're just like Job. The Bible says that Satan came to, the, to, to God and, and asked God about Job, or, or God asked Satan about Job. He said, now, have you considered my servant Job? Mm. You know? Because he, yes. he, he upright. He doing things right. Amen. And when the adversary began to see 
your marriage doing right, you're in the right relationship with your one another, you're in harmony mm -hmm. with your spouse, amen, he tried to bring in division or whatever you can to upset the harmony of your relationship. That's true. Amen. Glory to God. And the only thing that, one of the things that helped relationships along is to stick it out. Some mm. You got to stick some things out. Amen. Amen. You yes, got to you weather do. the storm on some things. That's true. Amen. In order Lord to go to the next level of your relationship. What do you think about that? Amen. You agree? Yeah, I agree. You got to stick it out. You can't just give up. You can't. Uh, no. Sometimes you want to. Sometimes you want to quit. But you got to hang on in there. You know, I uh, <laughs> remember hearing my wife and uh, the service she had to church, and she was explaining to the lady, she said, you know what? Um, I went through a lot. She said, but she was glad she hung in there because she had to be another lady sitting up there talking about she's the first lady. I said, oh, wow. Listen to her. Sister Troy. Oh, be a baby. different Sister Troy. <laughs> <laughs> she actually said <laughs> she had caught all the hell and she was going to be there to catch all the blessings. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. Ate the poke beans and the sardines. Yeah, she ate the poke oh, beans yeah, and the sardines. Oh, yeah, I'm going to eat the steak. Yes. You see there? <laughs> yeah, she's going to eat the steak. She'll you know. get what she ever want. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But in that, the adversary is trying to attack marriages, and I want you to be aware of that. Amen. But the Bible tells us to give no place to the devil. Amen. Amen. Give no. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So when you find your, your marriage going through rocky and tough times, not because of your finances and stuff like that, yeah, it could be that as well, but to try to break up the relationship, know that the devil's at work. Amen. Infidelity, the devil is at work. You're supposed to have a relationship where you're, you're able to trust each other and be honest with each other because you love each other. Amen, 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 amen. But the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. He finds divine favor with God because God has given him a divine assistant. Amen. amen. Tell me some things about the, uh, the wife, being, a, being a, the kind of wife that God wants the man to find. Mm. What are some qualities of the kind of wife that God wants a man to find? Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't hit me. <laughs> you know what? A wife who is a good thing, as yes. it says in Scripture, is a wife who is submitted to her husband. Oh, my God. Submitted. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of us don't like that word. I didn't like it early on in my marriage because I didn't understand it. Mm. But I thank God when I learned it, oh, my goodness. If you would be a submitted wife, you are have him eating at your hand, girl. <laughs> now, let's make sure we understand the word submit. Yes. Biblical mm -hmm. submission teaches wives to you place yourself under the authority of the spiritual leader of the family. Amen. In Ephesians 5 and 22, it says, Wives, submit to yourselves and to your own husband as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. It goes on further to say in James 4 and 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God Resist the devil, yeah. and he will flee from you. Amen. The word teaches believers that to submit is to place yourself mm -hmm. under the Lord's authority. That's right. Are you doing that in your life today, wives? My, my. So then, Ephesians 5 and 22, this does not mean that wives are to become a slave of their husband, mm -hmm. it simply means that a submissive wife is obedient to the word of God. Amen. And I tell you, when I like I said, when I found that out, whew, it was an eye opener. I had been missing out on so many things because I wasn't a submissive wife. I wasn't submitted. 
a wife being a good thing mm-hmm. is a wife who demonstrates self-control. Amen. She's not a nagging, contentious, and quarrelsome wife. Wow. I can even remember when I was that kind of wife. <laughs> My <laughs> goodness. Mm. Lord have mercy. Thank you for saving me. Amen. And I know my husband agrees with that. Amen. Amen. Because, oh, boy, I can just remember I nagged. And, I mean, it just don't even make any sense. But anyway, Proverbs 19 and 13 says, The contentious of a wife are a continual dropping. Amen. Can you imagine that? A nagging wife. It's like a leaking yeah. roof. Just, Amen. Ch- ch- oh, my goodness. It, it upsets me. Mm. A leaking roof can render a house unfit to live in. My, my. My goodness. Nagging. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Do that. that uh, uh. Oh, my goodness. Father, I just thank you for saving me and mm-hmm. delivering me. So, uh, Proverbs 21 and 19 says, It's better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. My, my. my goodness. Saying that it's better to live alone in the desert mm-hmm. than with a wife who sows strife and discord. My. Always bringing up something. Always bringing up the past. Yeah. Arguing about this. Mm-hmm. God has been good to us. He has been good to you wives, I'm sure. Amen. And, oh, my goodness, I just thank God for deliverance. Mm -hmm. Because just imagine someone causing problems all the time. Man, I hate to come home. Yes, Lord. Because he going to hear your mouth. (laughs) So, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you you for that. Bless you, Lord. Psalms, uh, Proverbs 25 and 24 says, It's better. (laughs) To dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Mm, My My goodness. He'd rather live on top of the house (laughs) than to live with you in a big (laughs) house. My Lord. Arguing and fussing and complaining and implying that the house isn't even big enough for the husband and the wife. So hopefully today, if you have not started Start to be a uh, submissive wife. Amen. And watch the results. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, you're, you're starting today, but working on your next anniversary. Amen. 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 Not this this one, the, the next one. Not your 2020 anniversary, your 2021 anniversary. Because 2020 is, is shot in some of the things that you desire to do. Mm. You know? Um, I was just, just telling her, I desire to... I had planned to take her to Vegas. Now, we weren't going to Vegas to gamble. I was going to Vegas to eat at <laughs> them one hand, one arm bandit. one arm bandit. I was going to Vegas to eat at some of them places. Bellagio. I wanted to eat at that big old restaurant they got in there where they had them king crab legs. <laughs> but that's going to have to be for another time. Amen. But but husband. Husband, the wife said, the, the, she just explained some things for the wife. But let me explain some things for the husband. When you read that that passage of scripture in Ephesians, it also talks about a husband, uh, the wife and the husband submitting to one another. Amen. Husband, there's some times you're going to have to submit to your wife. Amen. 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 It also says there in Ephesians, when you read it, 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 it talks about the husband loving the wife like Christ Loved oh, the church yes. and, and gave himself for her. Amen. Now, I haven't counseled a, 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 a couple yet where the wife wouldn't say, if he was more loving toward me, then I will be a certain way toward him. The only problem with that, you're talking about reciprocal action. You're talking about if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. But the Bible says, Men, we have to be a, a loving husband regardless. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. A loving husband. I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't met a woman who would not be submissive to a loving husband. I haven't met one. So my brother, 
If she's not submissive, part of that could be because you're not loving. Glory to Amen. God. The Bible says uh, uh, for husbands, something that's found in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, but I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Simply putting it in perspective, he says the head of the family, again, is the husband. Amen. And he being the husband, he's the head of the wife. Amen. Now, he's not her boss. Amen. He's our husband. Amen. Amen. But again, if you're a loving husband, you won't have no problem with that. But notice what he said. He said that Christ has to be the head of the man. That's In order true. for a man to lead his family like God desires him, God has to be his head. Amen. God has to be head of the man's life in order for him to be head of his family's life. Amen. Amen. You see, we're all submitted to someone. That's true. And he had to be submitted to God and his family has to be submitted to him. Amen. Amen. That is so wonderful. Praise God. The husband and being that, that, that the loving husband, the Bible says in Ephesians uh, 5 and 23, for the husband is the head of, head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and the savior of the body. Same principle. Amen. Allowing the husband to know where he's supposed to be as the head. Amen. Now, husband, be the head. Not the boss. Because you're not the boss. Brother, you're, you're, not, the you're boss. not the boss. <laughs> you're not. One thing about being the head. I'm the head, but she's the neck to turn the head. Glory hey. to God in the highest. Amen. Again, if you want to have a submissive wife, then you're going to have to be a loving husband. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 28 says this so simply. So man ought to love his wife, even as his own body. That's how he's supposed to love his wife. Wow. It also says, if that, that's pointing out the fact that if you don't love your wife, you don't love yourself. Amen. So, if you want a submissive wife, you're going to have to have, be a submissive husband in love. You're going to have to love her. The, the funny thing about that, when I read that, God never told the woman to, to love the husband. He told the woman to be submissive yes, to the husband. Respect him. Amen. But then he told, told the husband, now husband, <laughs> you make sure you love her. You make sure you love her. Wow. Wow. So, if you're going to be the kind of man that God wants you to be, a man that has a, a good thing for a wife, you're going to have to be a, a very loving and caring husband. Right. Amen, amen, amen. Lastly, I just want to say for the, the husband, the Bible says something specifically to us uh, found in Malachi 2 and 15. So be careful not to be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. It's amazing how nowadays uh, people change husband and wife like they change socks. You know? <laughs> so uh, you, you aging a little bit, but you want a younger wife. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, be not unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Amen. Let us know. Stick it out together. Amen. Be in it to the end. Mm. Recognize and realize the vows that you said, to death do us part. Amen. Do not allow yourself to be caught up into any tricks of the enemy. 
that will cause you to not be faithful to your wife. Amen. Women, do not be caught up in any tricks of the enemy that would allow you or call you to be unfaithful to your husband. Amen. See, marriage is a spiritual relationship. Akin to our relationship with God. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, <laughs> I hope you received a whole lot out of what we said today. We could, it's so much more no, we could no, say. No, we no, we no, have no. more to say than we have time. Amen. And concerning the marriage uh, relationship, it's a beautiful relationship, but it's going to be what you make it in God. Amen. You have God's word to lead and guide you. Amen. But it requires obedience on your part in order to have the harmony in the home that God wants you to have. Amen. Amen. Bless amen. the Lord. I, I, I'm, I'm not finished. I'm just going to stop right there because as I said, it's so, so much more that uh, we could say together about marriage. Amen. amen. Well, dear, what do we have next? Amen. I certainly enjoyed that message Did you? today, Bishop. Did you? Amen. I Amen. enjoyed you too. Did you really? Yes, I did. All right. I love you. I love you too. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. And I'd like to thank you all as well for the well wishes that uh, were shown toward us this past week on our anniversary. Thank you so much. Amen. Well... We've come to a special time in our broadcast. Can anyone tell me what time it is? It's giving time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, it's giving time. A time to be blessed and a time to be a blessing. On the count of three. One, two, three. As we give today's tithes, tithes and, and offerings, offering, we, we are, are believing the Lord, the Lord for... for Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received. It's giving time. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you so much for your giving and for tuning in to our broadcast today. We pray that you were blessed by the word. All donations are greatly appreciated, and they may be sent to our cash app at dollar sign L-O-L-M Church. Also, remember to join us on Wednesday for prayer the phone number is 760-548-9105. Thank you. Amen, amen. Now, uh, just adding to what was just said, on Monday, I'm having a, a talk with the bishop at 7 o'clock at that same phone number. You can call and talk to the bishop where we'll be talking about some things that are um, important to the ministry and and important information that you need to know. Amen. That's Monday at 7 o'clock. You can dial that number and talk with the bishop. Amen. 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 Well, I bless God for this opportunity to be before you. Uh, just recalling, you know, there are so many people have, young people have said to us in marriage, they, they want their marriage to be like ours. <laughs> well, you're going to have to put in the work. You can get a 48-year marriage when you've been married 48 years. You can't get no 48-year marriage when you've been married for one or two years. You got to put in the work. Amen. And marriage is the hardest work you'll ever do in your life. Amen. Amen. We again thank you all for joining us. Understanding that we are involuntarily stand apart, but we are still voluntarily worshiping together. Amen. So we thank you for being with us today. Amen. Amen. And remember what Jesus said. 
Jesus said this. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. God bless you. Do be safe. Amen. We love you. Bye-bye. The light of light is shining on. The dark of night can overcome. The light of light that burns so bright can take the wrong and make it right. Make it right.